You have a very narrow assessment of me, Tony. Yeah, right? I'm good. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that are hated for winning Best Picture. <laughs> I'm not a king. I could work without innovation. I'm done with theater. For this list, we'll be looking at Best Picture winners that received disdain for taking home the Academy's top prize. The films don't necessarily have to be outright bad, but there does have to be a general sense of public indignation that they won. Which of these movies do you actually think deserved their accolades? Defend your choice in the comments. Number 10. Ordinary People So long as they're well-written and well-acted, family dramas rarely miss the mark, and Ordinary People as it stands is similarly solid. But compared to the best films of any year, it does seem rather, well, ordinary. I don't admire people too much. They'll disappoint you sometimes. There were certainly more interesting and unique nominees that year, like The Elephant Man. But for our money, we would have given it to Raging Bull, which is one of the best of the decade. Stay here! You won! Let him go first! Stay here! Tell him! It's possible that the Academy voters were hesitant to pick another boxing drama so soon after 1976's Rocky, but the safe pick isn't always the right pick. If Ordinary People was a person, it would probably need some therapy after this decision. I'll level with you. I'm not a great believer in psychiatry. Okay. I know what happens here is only between you and him, and, uh, and I like that. I respect that, and, uh, and he's better. I can see that. Number 9. The English Patient Whenever people are discussing pretentious Oscar picks, The English Patient is almost guaranteed to come up. How can you stand there? How can you ever smile as if your life had capsized? Director Anthony Minghella, who also made Cold Mountain, certainly knew how to make epic romantic dramas. The English Patient is packed with gorgeous landscape shots, and the cinematography is consistently impressive. Unfortunately, it can sometimes feel self-indulgent. And at 162 minutes, it's not the kind of picture we're liable to go back to. I just want you to know I'm... I'm not missing you yet. Speaking of which, we love going back to other nominees, like Jerry Maguire and Fargo. The latter of the two is arguably the most deserving of the gold, what with its dark themes and memorably quirky characters. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Number eight, The King's Speech. <laughs> I'm not a king. This film is a powerfully acted drama with some great dialogue, but the Academy also has a habit of being lured in by period settings and costume design, which feels like it played a factor here. The flick suffers most in the public's estimation, however, because it stole the award from arguably the best film of the decade, David Fincher's The Social Network. This is our time. When viewed side by side, we can clearly see the distinction between the new school and the old school, and which the Academy feels most comfortable siding with. Indentured servitude. Something of that nature, yes. Furthermore, 2010 was absolutely stacked with fresh offerings. Black Swan, The Fighter, and Inception all would have been acceptable alternatives. But The King's Speech, really? Okay, Academy. Timing isn't my strong suit. <laughs> Number seven, Out of Africa. Most of these movies can still be enjoyed under the right circumstances, but Out of Africa isn't really one of them. It's not meant to hurt you. It does. The romantic drama tells the mostly true story of a Danish baroness who struggles to maintain a coffee farm on the plains of Kenya whilst romancing a big game hunter. You've ruined it for me, you know. Ruined what? Being alone. Though, again, the cinematography is something to marvel at, the sleepy tone and languid pacing make it easily one of the most tedious watches on the list. It also misses the opportunity to comment on the themes of colonialism inherent to the plot. And while there's no outright favorite amongst its competition, in retrospect, the color purple feels much more deserving of the Academy's love. I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field and don't notice it. Number six, Driving Miss Daisy. What are you doing? I'm trying to drive you to the stove. This is one instance where we'd have rather seen the award go to literally any other nominee. Born on the 4th of July, Dead Poet Society, Field of Dreams, My Left Foot are all far and away better choices. Well, Christy, that's the nearest he'll ever come to saying he loves you. Hell, even Academy members thought they got it wrong upon being polled in 2015. 
Driving Miss Daisy is not a terrible movie, nor is it the worst Best Picture winner out there. But we're not chomping at the bit to give it any kind of hardware either. She can say anything she likes, but she can't fire you. You understand? Yes, uh... Yes, yes, I sure do. The performances of Morgan Freeman and Jessica Tandy are strong enough to keep the film ticking, but it never really overcomes stereotypes or goes the distance in terms of exploring race. I'm gone, Miss Daisy. All right, Idella. See you tomorrow. I'm gone too, Miss Daisy. Good. Number five, Green Book. Speaking of driving Miss Daisy, many regarded Green Book as being the reverse of that picture. It too depicts an interracial friendship being formed between a chauffeur and their employer, only this time with the roles switched. You have a very narrow assessment of me, Tony. Yeah, right? I'm good. Once again, many felt that the writing wasn't as thematically nuanced as it needed to be, with the actors doing the bulk of the heavy lifting. So if I'm not black enough, and if I'm not white enough, and if I'm not mad enough, then tell me, Tony, what am I? Best Picture was up for grabs come Oscar night, as many figured the Academy would overlook the arguably most deserving film, Roma, due to it being a Netflix release. We still didn't really hold out for the audience favorite, A Star Is Born, to win, but this choice pleased pretty much no one. I don't know. Personally, I think if you stuck to the classic stuff, it would have been a big mistake. Number four, American Beauty. This was one that was actually held in high regard for quite some time. People lauded the interconnected story of suburban households from screenwriter Alan Ball as being subtly profound. And then society woke up, if you will. Honey, are you trying to look unattractive? Yes. Congratulations, you've succeeded admirably. Namely, it's the characterizations in the film that are the most troubling. The dad in a midlife crisis fawning over his daughter's friend did not age super well. Then you've got a closeted former colonel inflicting violence due to his repression. Also, sorry Wes Bentley, but a plastic bag floating in the wind isn't the most beautiful thing we've ever seen. It really isn't. Sometimes there's so much beauty in the world. I feel like I can't take it. If the Academy wanted a tearjerker, the Green Mile was right there. Don't put that thing up on my face. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dog. Number three, How Green Was My Valley. This movie likely wouldn't even be remembered today if it weren't for the film it beat out. Memory. Strange that the mind will forget so much of what only this moment is past, and yet hold clear and bright the memory of what happened years ago, of men and women long since dead. Forget the Green Mile, forget Roma. This drama beat out Citizen Freakin' Kane, the movie that's literally used to describe the best of certain things. Citizen Kane is the Citizen Kane of movies, for gosh sakes. I don't think any word can explain a man's life. Whether you actually believe that or not, there's no denying history will view this as the Citizen Kane of best picture upsets. We are not questioning your authority, sir. But if manners prevent our speaking the truth, we will be without manners. Citizen Kane. In all fairness, though, there's a lot to be admired about How Green Was My Valley, from its solid cast to John Ford's direction. However, it is overly sentimental, and this fact alone keeps it from being the Citizen Kane of 1941 movies. That would be Citizen Kane. Rosebud. Number two, Shakespeare in Love. At the end of the day, Shakespeare in Love probably doesn't deserve all the hate that it gets. At worst, it's a pretty good movie that got way too much praise from Hollywood's highest governing body. Tell me how you love her, Will. Like a sickness and its cure together. Yes. Like rain and sun. Like cold and heat. In addition to snagging Best Picture from Saving Private Ryan, the obvious choice, the film also took home acting Oscars for Gwyneth Paltrow and Judi Dench, the latter of whom only had a measly eight minutes of screen time. Too late, too late. It was strange choices like these on the Academy's part, and don't get us wrong, we love us some Dame Judi Dench, that made people scratch their heads about this romantic period comedy drama. The Academy was in love with Shakespeare in Love, but the rest of us wanted to keep it platonic. I'm done with theater. The Playhouse is for dreamers. Look what the dream brought us. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Greatest Show on Earth. 
It wasn't even the greatest show of the year. You are a sour puss, aren't you? Yeah. You want to bite somebody? Yeah. Well, pick your spot. The Artist. The Academy picked a silent movie about old-timey Hollywood. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> A Beautiful Mind. This choice is indicative of there being no clear favorite that year. Adequate work without innovation. Oh, I'm flattered, you flattered? Flattered. Dances with Wolves. Another white savior narrative. It also stole the crown from Goodfellas. I almost had him! I almost had him! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Crash. Winning Best Picture was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Crash, as it otherwise would have been forgotten as just an overrated awards bait movie. I need security in my office. You know, you don't like me, that's fine. I'm a prick. Yet, in one of the most controversial outcomes in Oscar history, it beat out the much more deserving Brokeback Mountain, proving that the Academy wasn't quite ready to embrace a gay love story. If you can't fix it, Jack, you got a standard. For how long? As long as we can ride it. They couldn't even justify their choice with a worthy alternative, as Crash has since been derided for its sloppy narrative and hokey themes, all exacerbated by a truly saccharine presentation. The hatred for this movie is so strong, in fact, that it's been deemed the quintessential incorrect Best Picture winner, and we have to agree. What the hell is wrong with you, man? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.